What do you think separates an average iPhone photo from a great masterpiece? Well, let me give you a hint. When you're looking at the work of the best iPhone photographers, you're never just looking at their photos alone. You're always looking at the combination of the original photo and careful photo editing. My name is Emil Pokarklis. I'm the founder of iPhone Photography School, and in this video I'll show you how to use photo editing apps to make your average photos look spectacular. I'll show you the exact steps I took to transform this original, unedited photo into this beautiful final result that got 4,872 likes on Instagram. Now, if you compare these two images, you'll see that the colors are now more vibrant, the shadows are darker, the sun looks better, and if you zoom in, you'll see that there's a lot more detail in the forest. So I'll show you how I edited this photo using a free app called Snapseed, and how you can use this app to improve your own photos. Now, if you really want to get the most out of this video, I recommend that you actually follow along the editing process on your own iPhone. But for this to work, you'll need to have access to two devices. For example, you could be watching this video on your computer or on your tablet and actually do the editing on your iPhone. If you just have access to your iPhone now, that's fine too. Just keep watching this video and you can do the editing process on the iPhone later. But if you do have access to more than one device, uh, then I recommend that you watch this video on your computer or tablet and do the editing process on your iPhone. To do that, you'll first need to download the original unedited photo to your iPhone. And the easiest way to do that is to simply open this page on your iPhone. And in case you need to find this link again, uh, you can open your email on your iPhone and you'll find uh, the link to this video there. And from there, uh, once you're on this page again, right under this video, you'll see the image download link. Simply tap on that download link and the image will open up on your iPhone in full screen. When the image is open, tap and hold your finger for about three seconds right in the middle of the image and you'll see the option to save image. Select the option to save image and the photo will be saved to the Photos app of your iPhone. To do the editing, you'll also need to have the Snapseed app installed on your iPhone. Snapseed is a free app that's produced by Google, so there's really no reason not to install it right now. So if you don't have Snapseed already, uh, you'll find a link to the Snapseed app right under this video. Simply tap on that link, follow the on-screen instructions, and you'll be able to install Snapseed as well. And once you have the original unedited photo and Snapseed app on your iPhone, you're ready to start editing. When you open the Snapseed app, the first thing you want to do is actually open the photo you'll be working with. And for that, simply tap the Open icon at top left. And from here, choose Open from Device. This shows you all the different folders that you have. And I'm simply going to select all photos and pick the most recent photo. So now, the photo we're going to work with is open in Snapseed, and we can start editing. The first thing I want to do is go to Tools at the bottom of the screen, and this brings up a menu with all the different editing tools that you have in Snapseed. And the first editing tool I'm interested in is called Crop, here on top right. So I'm going to select Crop, and this opens up the Crop tool of Snapseed. At the bottom of the screen, you have a choice of various aspect ratios, which essentially determine uh, the ratio between the sides of the image uh, according to which the photo will be cropped. I'm going to select original here, which is actually the same as four by three. And once I've selected original, uh, I will try to crop this image in a way that creates the best possible composition. So when cropping a photo like this, what really matters is how the image will be composed. And since this photo is almost symmetrical, but not quite, I'd like to use the crop tool to actually create uh, a perfect symmetry in terms of composition. And to do that, I'll need to crop out some pixels on the left-hand side, and that's why I'm dragging the image from bottom left. So my goal is to position the subject exactly in the center of the frame, like so. 
but I also want to preserve the original aspect ratio, which I selected earlier, uh, and I want to make sure that at the bottom of the screen, right around the boots of my subject, there will still be enough space so that it looks pleasing. So a good guideline in cropping is that uh, you want to leave just a little bit of breathing room around any important subjects, such as the feet of my subject. So to do that, I'll simply reposition uh, the frame like so, and I think uh, this creates a very pleasing composition that's symmetrical, so I'm happy with the result, and I am going to tap the OK check mark at the bottom right-hand corner, and when I tap that, the crop is applied, and we can now continue the editing process. Now that I've successfully cropped this photo, I'd like to work on improving its color. And to do that, I'm going to once again tap on Tools at the bottom of screen, and from Tools, I'll select Tune Image, which is the very first tool. And Tune Image really is the backbone of Snapseed, and that's because pretty much any photo you'll ever edit in Snapseed can be improved in Tune Image. The way Tune Image works is that if you swipe your finger vertically across the screen like this, you can choose between various adjustment sliders. And if you pick any one of them, such as saturation, you can then uh, swipe your finger horizontally across the screen to increase or decrease that particular slider, like I'm doing it right now. So for now, I'll return to zero for saturation, and I'll go all the way up to brightness, which is the first slider I want to work with. The way brightness works is that if you swipe to the left, the image gets darker, and if you swipe to the right, the image gets brighter. And with this specific photo, my goal is to really enhance the beautiful colors of the forest and the sunset. I think that's what really makes this photo special, and in order to um, showcase these colors even more, I'm going to actually decrease brightness just a little bit. Now, this is kind of counterintuitive, but if you want to show deep, beautiful colors in your photos, you can do it better if the photo is somewhat darker. And because of that, I'm going to decrease brightness just a little bit. I don't want to overdo this, and with any of these sliders, it's very, very easy to over-edit your photos, and beginners make that mistake all the time. So when you're in doubt, lean towards uh, subtler edits and smaller adjustment values, and then it's more likely that you'll get beautiful results. So for brightness, I'm going to select a relatively modest value of minus 15, which makes the image just a little bit darker, and I think that's what I need to really highlight the colors more. Now, next, I'm going to skip some of the sliders in the middle, and I'll go to saturation. Now, saturation determines how much color there really is in the photo. So if you decrease saturation, uh, you essentially go towards a black and white photo until it's completely black and white. Or if you increase saturation, you do the opposite, and the colors become more and more intense. Now, for this photo, my goal is to highlight the beautiful colors. So I want to increase saturation. But I have to be really careful, because if I increase saturation too much, you'll see that the colors no longer look natural. And that's a mistake. So with saturation, just like with any other slider, you want to be a little bit careful. So after playing around with this slider for a while, I think something like plus 40 gives me the kind of result I want. So the colors are substantially more saturated, they stand out more, uh, but they still look mostly natural, and that's what I want for this photo. Next up, I'm going to go down to the shadows adjustment. So the shadows adjustment is really interesting because it allows me to only work with the darkest parts of the image, which in this case are the trees and the subject in the center of the frame. So if I decrease shadows, you'll see that the darkest parts of the image become even darker, or if I increase shadows, the darkest parts of the image become brighter. I want to further emphasize uh, the beautiful uh, forest, and I can do it by making the tree trunks just a little bit darker. And to do that, I want to decrease shadows. But if I go too far, you'll see that I start losing detail in the forest, and everything just becomes sort of black uh, without any tones or detail or texture. 
and that's not uh, very beautiful. So I have to be really, really careful with the shadows slider. And I think a very modest value of minus 10 uh, will achieve the kind of look I'm after. So, so far I've changed just three sliders and I think that's all I need for this photo. But when you're doing this on your own, feel free to experiment with all these sliders. See how each one of them individually affects the photo and also see what you can achieve with different combinations. I've edited this photo before, so I was confident about the values I have selected. But when you're doing this for the first time, it's a discovery process. So simply play around with the sliders until you find a combination uh, that really looks beautiful. So now, with just three sliders, I've made a substantial difference to what the photo looks like. And if I want to compare what we have now with the original, I can simply tap and hold my finger at the top right hand corner. As I hold my finger down, you'll see the original before any edits. And as I release my finger, you'll see what kind of a difference we've been able to create using just three sliders in Tune Image. As I said, Tune Image really is the backbone of Snapseed. If you learn to use these few sliders well, you can really improve any photo you've ever taken. So now that I'm happy with what I've done in Tune Image, I'll go ahead and tap on the OK check mark at bottom right, and that will apply all the changes I've made inside the Tune Image section of Snapseed. Now that we've improved the colors of this photo, there's something else I'd like to do. So I'm going to tap on Tools again, and now I'm going to select the second option, which is Details. Inside Details, there are just two sliders. One is called Structure, and the other one is called Sharpening. And the one I'm interested in is called Structure. Now, when you increase Structure, what tends to happen is that any strong textures or any small details, such as individual uh, leaves or tree branches, really get amplified in the photo. So let's zoom in a little bit so I can show you exactly what it looks like. So here, we're looking at the individual tree branches and if structure is set to zero, uh, they don't look particularly sharp or detailed. But as I increase structure, you really start to see the individual branches stand out more. And if we zoom back out again, uh, you'll see that one of the things that really make this photo beautiful uh, is the forest. And if I want this forest uh, to look even better, then increasing structure uh, is an easy solution. Now, you have to be careful with structure for a couple of reasons. One is that as you increase it, uh, the image tends to get grainier and also the overall photo quality can go down a little bit. So it might be tempting to go for a really high structure value, but that comes at a quality cost. So I don't want to do that. And because of that, I'm going to select a relatively modest value of plus 40, which still gives me the look I'm after without introducing any quality issues. And just to verify that everything looks the way it should look, I'm going to use two fingers to zoom in. And if I now tap and hold my finger at the top right hand corner, I'll see uh, what the photo looked like before I did the structure adjustment. And as I release my finger, I'll see that after structure, uh, the photo indeed looks better. Uh, I can see the individual uh, three branches much more clearly, but at the same time, I haven't introduced any unnecessary artifacts or quality issues to the photo. So I'm really happy with what I've accomplished. So I'm going to go ahead and apply these changes using the OK check mark at the bottom right. So structure is one of these things that you definitely don't need for every photo, but if the photo has a strong texture or a lot of fine detail, such as individual three branches, then you can really improve it using the structure slider under the details module of Snapseed. Now, at this point, we could be done, but if I zoom in a little bit here on the left-hand side, you'll see that there's this green dot, and then uh, on this tree branch, there's something red that probably shouldn't be there. And what we're looking at is called lens flare. So it's a type of uh, quality problem that sometimes happens when you have sun directly shining into the lens of the iPhone. 
Now the good news is that I can address this problem quite easily using the healing tool of Snapseed. So to get to healing, I'm going to tap on tools again. And from here, I need to find healing, which is located on the left hand side of the screen, uh, somewhere in the middle. So I'm selecting healing. And now we're inside the healing section of Snapseed. So we're working with a relatively small area of the image. So I need to use two fingers to zoom in. And you'll see the more I zoom in, the smaller the circle in the center of the screen becomes. And this circle essentially shows me the size of the adjustment brush I'll be working with. Let me just show you how it works. So my goal is to remove this green dot. And to do that, I'm going to use one finger and I'll simply paint over the problem area. And as I release my finger, you'll see that the green dot is gone. But I think I selected a slightly uh, bigger area than I should have selected. So I'll go back and I'll quickly do this again. And with the healing tool, it's OK to try as many times as you want. If it doesn't work out, you just go back and you try again. So my goal is to remove this green dot. So I'll just select this area and the green dot is gone. Here's another problem. So I'll select that and it's gone. Now here, uh, there's another small problem area. So I'll select that. And finally, towards the bottom of the image, we have the problem area here on the tree trunk. Um, so I'm going to select all of that. And once again, it has disappeared. So if we now zoom out, you'll see that these small quality issues are no longer found in the image. So I'm really happy with the changes we've made uh, using the healing tool. So I'll go ahead and tap the OK check mark at the bottom right, which will apply these changes to the image. So now that the healing effect has been applied to the image, I think I'm done with this edit in Snapseed. But there's one more step I'd like to do using another app. So stay tuned for that. But before we get to the other app, let's just quickly review what we've been able to accomplish in Snapseed. So if I tap and hold my finger on the image, you'll see the original photo that I started with before any edits. And you'll see that it hasn't been cropped, so the composition is worse. Uh, the colors aren't as intense or as beautiful. And also, the individual uh, tree branches don't stand out as much. So as I hold down, I can see the original. And as I release my finger, I can see what we've been able to accomplish in just a few short steps in the Snapseed app. So I'm really happy with the progress so far. And before we go to the next app, I want to tap on Export at the bottom right, and I'll select Save a Copy, which is the saving option you should use for all your work in Snapseed. Now, the last step of the editing process will be adding an artificial sun using the Landslide app to further enhance this photo. Now, this step is optional, and if you don't want to do it, you don't have to do it. But please watch this video until the end, so you'll see exactly what I'm doing, and then you can decide if this is something you're interested in. Landslide is a paid app. It costs a few dollars, and you'll find a link to Landslide app right under this video. If you don't know if you want Landslide, that's OK. Just watch this video, see what I'm doing, and then you'll be able to make a decision. When you first open the Landslide app, you'll need to import the photo you'll be working with. So for that, simply tap your finger on Photos and go to All Photos. And if you just save your work in Snapseed, then the most recent image should be the one you're looking for. So I'm going to select that image. And now I'll simply select Done at the top right. So now you'll see that the image has been imported in Landslide, and we can start working. So the first thing I want to do is tap on Effects at bottom left, which is where all the effects of Landslide are hidden. And I primarily use this application for uh, adding beautiful suns to my photos. And they're all located under the Sun Collection. So that's what I'm going to select. In Sun Collection, you can choose between various different Sun templates. And the one I want to use for this photo is called Epic Sun. So I'm going to select Epic Sun. And now you'll see that the sun has appeared in the center of the image. Now, this is obviously not the correct position. So I'm going to use my finger to drag the sun to where it belongs, which is exactly where the natural sun was found, like so. 
So it's important to get the position exactly right, and I think this is fairly accurate. So now you'll see uh, that the artificial sun is in the right place, but I think I can further improve it if I select Edit at the bottom of the screen. So when I tap on Edit, all these adjustment sliders come up. So let's go through them one by one. Now the first slider is called Scale, and that essentially determines the size of the artificial sun. So you can make it huge or you can make it tiny. So here, it's important to find the right balance. I want a sun that's going to really stand out and make this image special, but I also don't want to overdo this because that would just look ridiculous. So your goal with these special effects is to do them in such a way where they still look natural enough that the average person won't even realize that you've actually added the sun. And after experimenting with different sizes, I think something around 70% uh, will be the best size for this particular photo. The next slider is called brightness, and this essentially determines how dark or bright the sun will be. But it also messes up the colors in the rest of the photo, and because of that, I'm simply going to uh, leave it at a neutral value of around 50%. Next up is the aspect slider, and if you use this, you can change the shape of the sun. I think the natural shape was probably the best one, so I'm going to leave the aspect slider at about 50% as well. Next up, we have source. And the source slider determines uh, essentially how big and how bright the central part of the sun will be. Uh, for this photo, I think 100% looks best, in my opinion. And finally, there's the artifact slider. So the artifacts are all the red lines that you'll see surrounding the sun, and if we uh, decrease them, all these red lines disappear. Uh, so after experimenting with different values, I think I don't want any artifacts in this photo. Uh, to the right, you also have the option to change the color of the sun, but honestly, I think the color we have now is very good. It looks perfectly natural to me, so I'm happy to leave it as it is. So now I'll just tap on the screen again to see what we have. And I think I'm really happy with the sun we've added. It definitely makes this image uh, more special. It stands out more. But the average person would never realize that the sun is actually artificial. And that's what I want. So I'm really happy with what I've accomplished in Lenslight. And now the last step is simply saving my work. So to do that, I'm going to tap the share icon at the top right and I'll choose to save my work. If you look at the original unedited photo and compare it to the final result, you'll see how much we've been able to improve it in a relatively quick photo editing session. So as you can see, the difference between a good photo and a great one is often not in how the photo was taken, but in the editing that was done later. And if you don't know how to correctly edit your photos, they will never look as good as they should. You won't feel proud about them, and you certainly won't be excited to show them to others. Now, I just shared with you some really powerful photo editing techniques, and while I didn't hold anything back, there's only so much I could share with you in a short video like this. Every photo is different, and in Snapseed alone, there are dozens of other editing tools we didn't get to talk about in this video. And that's why I've created iPhone Editing Academy, which is the only online course that shows you how to use photo editing apps to make your average photos look spectacular. So under this video, you can find out more about my full iPhone Editing Academy course. If you can't find it, then please tap on the link right next to this video, and that will take you to the right page. So please take a look at my full iPhone Editing Academy course right now before the registration closes, and I really hope to see you there.